Bethlehem. Bethlehem's been gone. It was Bethlehem left in 2002. That steel plan will never come back. That's done. That individual plan is done. The question is uh, that I have is that how, how many more are we going to lose? Uh, my name is Michael Lewis. I am a native of Baltimore, Maryland. I started, I've been out of high school for about seven months in early February of 1979. So I spent 34 years at the plant before it shut down. It felt great having a job uh, that paid a good middle class wage with uh, what we, some people would even describe as Cadillac benefits, but we would just say we had very good benefits, uh, union negotiated benefits with our health care. Uh, with our uh, insurance uh, that we had provided uh, to us. Uh, it was the morning. I guess initially we felt like, well, once again, we, were, we had a hurdle to over overcome. And I felt like that it was a possibility that once again, we could overcome the hurdle of a plant closing. But as time went on, the reality really began to set in that this was the final nail in the car. The shutdown was actually somewhat gradual. It's kind of a complex way based on how the operation worked, how which departments start to be phased out. You start in primary operations and work your way around to finishing operations over, over the plant. We saw uh, our 10 mil go down and there was a group of people laid off from the tenement. They started to phase out primary operations and it tr had a trickle effect across the plant over a four week period, so to speak, before the operation ceased to exist. But I was concerned when I started, we had a pipe mill, we had a rod and wire mill, we had the shipyard operating, we had our coke ovens operating, and over the course of my 34 year career, uh, at the Sparrows Point plant, uh, the pipe mill was closed down. They got out of making that product. The rod and wire mill closed down. They got out of making that product. The shipyard, they got out of the shipbuilding and ship repair, Bethlehem did. Uh, over the years, the technology in making steel has improved, and with every technological improvement came the downsizing of, of the necessary man hours to make steel. Nothing came down with a sludge hammer. Things were kind of chiseled. Manufacturing it's factors. many factors. Uh, it, it's many, many factors, and there's a lot of extenuating circumstances. Uh, the downfall of Spurs Point has to be put into context with the downfall of many manufacturing facilities. Influx of imports and the lack of any kind of tariffs on, on imported steel. The growing disparity between the 1% and the rest of us in which uh, uh, certain individuals profit greatly from the agony of many individuals. This huge imbalance of CEO compensation as compared to the average Joe on the shop floor. When I started working at the plant, I mean, you can check these statistics out right on the AFL-CIO website. It's a fact. Uh, the average CEO in 1979 was making 42 times that of the guy on the shop floor. So there's been a great ripple effect with the loss of our jobs. It created a lot of people in the same area, looking for similar type jobs, which there don't seem to be any of. Now granted, there are some opportunities for employment if you have certain skill sets. Uh, there are certain challenges, though, as you have an older population. I just recently turned 53, and I spent 34 years in the plant. Now you have to go out and start with competing for a job with someone just finishing Towson State <laughs> in their 20s. Life. It is quite challenging now to enter into an unknown as a new employee at a time in your life when you should be 
what some of us like to think is cruising toward retirement. And so uh, what I see is that fewer and fewer opportunities are out there, like the opportunities that I had upon my graduation from high school. My situation is somewhat unique. I was one of our elected union officers, and, and my, I spent most of my time up here as a financial secretary, the, the elected position that I had within the United Steelworkers. Most of us realize that we have to move on. We have to put forth our best efforts to move on. We need to take advantage of whatever resources come our way in, in making this transition. This is an opportunity for a lot of us to look inwardly and see uh, just what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are. You guys here from Towson are going to be the future. You, you know, you, you guys are going to be the generation that's going to have to provide health care services for old people like me. All right? You're going to be the future leaders.